Okay, thank you everybody for joining for a nice dry technical session at the end of the third day of the conference. Very pleased to have you here. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, open mobility and building an open platform for future and connected mobility. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So who am I? As, as the announcer said, I work as a CTO here for a small company based in Berlin. We employ about 30 people. My history is in software development, which is kind of why the projector doesn't work, um, because I'm using Linux instead of Windows. Um, and we have a background in kind of open source connected services, um, and that's really where we come to this mobility space from. Um, and I'm kind of interested to know where you guys are coming from as well. So um, how many of you are software engineers or have experience with software? Like a few. How many have used Linux? A few more. And I'm also curious, how many of you own a car? OK, more than I expected. Because um, that's one of the things about mobility is you know, especially if you live in a city like Berlin, you've got great access to mobility services. Um, and one of the things that's happening in society is car ownership is becoming less and less common as it becomes less and less necessary to uh, the daily lives of people. Um, so what do I mean when I talk about future and connected mobility? Well, what we're talking about is any emerging technology which is changing the way people and objects move around. Um, and that covers things from drones to electric scooters to car sharing schemes. And we'll come through some examples of those um, in that space. But it's quite a big space, and it's an exciting um, set of technologies that we're using there. So the focus of this talk is a little bit about where innovation is happening today and where we want it to be happening. And where we see a lot of innovation happening today is in the hardware labs of small startups. So there's lots of creativity around making vehicles. Um, this vehicle here is the Rally Fighter from a company called Local Motors. Um, they set up garages around the US, and they're starting to set them up in Europe, where you can come, you can play with their tools. If you have a concept, they will help you design it, turn it into a real piece of hardware, and they have a business model that can help you get that into production. So kind of exciting if you have a cool idea for a new sort of vehicle. There's an, another company called OS Vehicle. They're building um, an open source modular vehicle platform. So the thinking here is that if you want to build a new car, and maybe your innovation is in the drivetrain, then you're not very interested in having to pay a large amount of money for a steering wheel, because that's irrelevant to your innovation. So what they want is a modular, pluggable platform where you can bring whatever your innovative technology is and combine it with free-to-use, 3D printable, commercially available, at low cost, uh, technologies and build fresh vehicles that way. Um, another thing that's happening is electrification, and electrification makes a huge deal to a huge deal of difference to the barriers to innovation in this space. It turns out that it's a lot easier to build an electric vehicle than it is to build a vehicle with an internal combustion engine. Um, the hundreds of years of expertise that car manufacturers have making internal combustion engines robust and reliable over their lifetimes um, is essentially irrelevant if you can just take basically a big hairdryer motor and use that to drive you along. Um, so we see a lot of new companies entering the space in e-mobility, whether it's scooters or cars or bikes. Um, but e-mobility has a couple of problems. One of the problems is that you need to charge your vehicle. And so you don't really want to be driving around and spending half an hour on an hour charging up your vehicle. Uh, the solution from Gogoro, which you can nearly see, they have a pluggable battery pack. So you can park up your vehicle um, when it's out of charge at one of their stations, drop your battery pack, put a new battery pack in it, and you're ready to go. So a fill-up experience a bit like driving a car with all the advantages of an electric vehicle platform. Um, one of the other anxieties when you're driving an electric vehicle is about range. Often electric vehicles don't travel as far as petrol vehicles. Um, and this company, River Simple, has the prototype design there for a um, fuel cell-driven vehicle. And a fuel cell-driven vehicle takes hydrogen as its fuel, so you tank up on either electrolyzed or natural hydrogen. 
Um, and then as it drives along, it empties the tank by reacting that with oxygen in the air, producing water as a byproduct, and generating electricity to drive the drive chain. So that's somewhat environmentally friendly. Um, the efficiency of the hydrogen chain is slightly less than direct electrical, um, but it moves pollution out of cities. And again, easy to innovate here because the drive chain is simple because it's just an electric motor. Um, so we see a lot of hardware hacking. And that's kind of exciting that people can build these new concepts and we can see concept vehicles. But what we don't see here is a lot of innovation in software. And the software innovation is happening in the R&D centers of large, large companies, billion dollar companies, because the software you need to do interesting things in mobility is often expensive, time consuming, difficult to develop. Um, one thing that's coming soon uh, is vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure communication. So this is the idea that as your car is driving along, it's talking to other vehicles on the road, it's talking to traffic signs, to roadworks, to the cloud, um, so you can see when there's a traffic queue up ahead, you can see if there's a vehicle coming around the corner that you've not spotted. Um, this is difficult for a small company to deploy because the only way this works is if you have a large fleet of vehicles enabled with this technology. So this is really being deployed by large manufacturers and governments. Then there's truck pl platooning. So this is happening in the commercial vehicle space. Um, if you have a fleet of 10,000 trucks, they might be driving a million miles a day. And then if you can save 1% or 2% on fuel costs, you've actually saved yourself a lot of money for the running costs of your business. Um, so what happens is when two trucks of the same fleet meet each other on the highway, they switch to automatic driving, and then they drive so close together that human control wouldn't be practical. Um, but by driving that close together, they get additional aerodynamic efficiency, and so they save fuel costs, which over the fleet makes a huge difference. Um, but again, you have to be operating a fleet of 10,000 commercial vehicles, and that's not where every startup uh, maker is. Um, and then there's things like uh, increasingly autonomous driving. So there are basically two approaches to automatic driving. One is driver assistance systems, where you take um, a driving experience that is essentially the driver being occasionally told by the computer something's going on, like they should brake, think ABS or lane guidance. But the other is completely autonomous driving, where you have essentially a robot driving the car, it's processing the scene, it's deciding what's a pedestrian, it's choosing when to over overtake, it's implementing driving strategies. This involves a huge amount of AI, a huge amount of investment in technology, cutting edge things like uh, LiDAR um, and sensor fusion. So that's, again, not something you can really tinker in your garage with. Um, and of course, the, the big player in this space. So this is a consortium of BMW, Daimler, and Volkswagen who bought here. Um, the big player in this space that we all know about is Google, who are building the self-driving car, which is going to uh, become autonomous and rise up and enslave humanity. Um, so that's, that's, their, that's their platform. That's the friendly version. Um, so we see this innovation happening, and we see it happening in large companies with billion-dollar budgets, how can we bring that to smaller companies? Because we don't really want to live in a world where companies like Uber are deciding who can go where at what price, where they're in a race to build the largest possible network of the most vehicles, um, and where they're in this kind of dual monopolist position where they can say how much they pay taxi drivers if taxi drivers even exist, and how much it costs you as a passenger to take a ride in a vehicle. Um, how do we avoid a world like that, dominated by the big players? Well, as a technologist, our favorite resolution for this is open source. Uh, GNU and Tux there. Um, classically, that's what we do as ethical technologists to share innovation, to reduce the barriers, and to kind of move society along in a collaborative way. Um, and there are efforts in the mobility space to collaborate and write open source software. There's a project called Drone Code. Um, it's from the Linux Foundation. If you're building a drone and you want to control the motors and the flight controllers and the cameras and have an autopilot, Drone Code has an awful lot of software there you can use. It's quite nice. Um, but it's only really relevant if you're moving things that weigh about 10 kilograms or less, because drones don't have that much power on board. 
Um, there's a project called ROS, the Robot Operating System. Um, so these guys are building abstractions if you want to do control systems. So think um, robots in laboratories or robots exploring the environment. Um, nice set of abstractions, nice bit of open source software, but again, not really focused on what's happening in the vehicle. Um, and then there's two organizations, Genevi and Automotive Grade Linux, who are actually doing in innovation in open source in the infotainment space. So what they're trying to do is collaborate to build open source components that go inside the head unit inside a vehicle. Um, and this is kind of where ATS came in, our company. So, so we had this background in supply and connected services. And when we started the company, we wanted to demonstrate our exciting connected services in the vehicle. And we wanted to do that without having to license a really expensive vehicle platform from a manufacturer or without having to sign NDAs or any of this. So we went to Genevi and we went to Automotive Grade Linux. And I was kind of expecting that there would be some code there that we could check out and run. And there kind of was, but it wasn't actually a complete IVI system. There are components. There is an audio manager. There's a media manager. But it's not really a platform. And it's not something that you can check out and use. And even when you do check out and use it, the requirements for these systems are really designed for car manufacturers and their suppliers. So they're designed for people with experience of things like Qt, QML, C, C++, which generally, if you're a hipster with a MacBook, you don't have a lot of experience of doing. Um, so we decided we needed something different, and we built a platform called OpenIVI Mobility. Um, and this is, this is one of my OpenIVI Mobility boxes. Um, what this is is some cheap hardware in a commodity case. I really wish you could read the slides. But um, cheap hardware in a commodity case. So this is 3D printed design. The design is open source. All the parts in here are available pretty much on Amazon. Um, it's got a high resolution touch screen. It runs PC hardware. It's got an SSD inside. Um, it does, in principle, support platforms like ARM as well as Intel 32-bit and 64-bit. But most importantly, you can develop for this platform like you would develop a website. It supports an HTML5 development environment. So if you've got a concept and you want to see it on this screen, instead of spending years developing your own infotainment platform, you can download what we have in OpenIVI. You can build the hardware for less than $300. And then you can start showing something that looks like a head unit to people and demonstrating your concept. It's a dedicated platform for emerging mobility. I mean, we would love this to get wide range adoption. Um, but practically speaking, to go into a vehicle in a safety critical situation, we'd need to do an awful lot more development here. And ATS really isn't in a position to fund that kind of development. But it is great if you just have a, a kind of unconnected vehicle and you want to make it a connected vehicle with a user interface, this is a really good platform for that. It's designed to reduce the barriers to entry for people innovating in the mobility space. So we want you to have to write as little software and buy as little hardware as possible. And what we want to do is really create an ecosystem where innovators can work together, collaborate, share their developments, um, and exchange ideas and code. Um, what have we done with this? We launched this um, in 2015 at the Embedded Linux conference in Dublin. Um, so we had a showcase there where we showed the platform running. We've actually showcased it at Genevi, this automotive consortium, um, twice now, once last year in Seoul and once in Paris just last week. Um, we at ATS use this internally to deliver demos to customers. So when somebody wants to demo, I don't know, like um, Wi-Fi pairing and Bluetooth and NFC running on an infotainment platform. This is the platform ATS uses to deliver that demo. Um, and we've also integrated support for over-the-air updates, um, which is something I'll mention a bit more in a second. But that's quite critical for secure, fast software development. And it also helps you manage lots of devices with lots of different software on them. Um, what do we have on our roadmap? We want to add user authentication. So we want you to be able to target services not just at devices, but also at the users of those devices. Um, we want to add the ability to process data. So getting data from the vehicle systems, from the device up to the cloud, and processing it in the cloud. Um, and on the cloud side, we want you to be able to straightforwardly integrate with third-party services 
um, things that support OAuth 2, Twitter, Gmail, whatever, um, to make that very straightforward to link those services into the vehicle. The software is available. It's up on GitHub. Please check it out, have a look, download it, give us feedback, um, tell us it's broken, tell us it works. Uh, we would love to have people playing with this stuff, and we'd love to know where to take it next. Um, what could you do with this? Well, when we talk about mobility innovation, especially on the cloud side, there's a couple of things that spring to mind. Um, there are car sharing services, there are scooter, there are bike sharing services. You could develop a platform to make parking recommendations to people. You could start developing usage-based or risk-based services, so offering different services based on what people are doing with vehicles. All of this stuff you can do, but all of this stuff requires cloud connectivity. And so far, OpenIVI only addresses the device side. So one thing that ATS is doing is taking all of our experience on the cloud side and making that available to people to play with for free. So we have a software as a service development environment that we're launching later this year. Um, basically, all of our open source tools, the OTA updates, the user management, the data processing, we've put that together in a hosted environment and we're going to be making that available later this year for people just to sign up and use for small numbers of devices and give us some feedback and tell us what they need there. Um, but really, we do want to sustain this, this ecosystem. It's going to have support for managing over-the-air updates, for user profiles, for device logs, and for getting data from vehicles. Um, and we really hope it reduces the cost of innovation so that more people can enter this space and we can really start collaborating on mobility solutions. Um, and that's basically it. So that's me. That's a missing slide. And um, I'll open it up to questions, apart from why the slides don't work. Thank you very much, Arthur. And now we have around 10 minutes for questions from the audience. Who wants to start? No Come on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you for your talk. It's amazing. But don't you think your approach is um, a little bit too technical? I mean, I totally get your point of view because uh, I, I also do some programming. But don't you think uh, um, nowadays it's not about the source code? Like, let's, let's just write um, the open source version of Uber. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's not about the code. If you have um, a, code, a source code from Google, you ain't going to be a Google. Yeah. It's, it's much more yeah. than the, the, the code. And don't you think it's, um, your project won't be much more much appealing to broader audience uh, for them uh, to actually use it instead of Uber? Because I, I, I would pretty prefer Uber instead of just going on through this uh, authentication and yeah. stuff, you know? Um, so, of course, this is a technical solution. And, you know, the devil wears Prada. Lots of people have MacBooks and use Gmail. I use Gmail. And, you know, building our own ecosystem for this is obviously the hard road. And Google is going to make it very attractive to have an app store for mobility and then control both ends of that transaction. It's, it's more a question, what kind of society do we want to live in? Do we want to try and create this ecosystem as technologists? Or do we just want to hand over control of our basic freedom of movement to large organizations who aren't very interested in our well-being? Like, I think, yes, it's a difficult answer, but it's also the only alternative to what we're being sold. I agree with you 100%. Uh, my advice to you is just make it more sexy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Compared, think, to, compared to normal automotive stuff, this is, this is relatively sexy, <laughs> I promise. Hi. Um, you uh, just um, came up with some potential use cases. Could you maybe elaborate on that and maybe uh, give you a vision of who can actually um, um, attach to the um, sure. Open IVI? Um, so one of the things, I mean, the reason I asked about car ownership earlier, one of the things is about who's going to own a vehicle in the future. And um, what we see happening in technology and a little bit in uh, advanced cultures, uh, Western civilization, is 
car ownership is less interesting because you don't really need a car because you can hire a car and you can rent most of what you need to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so what we see happening is instead of somebody owning a single vehicle which is fit for multiple purposes, they will rent minute by minute the vehicle that's best suited for what they're trying to do now. So if they want to get across town in a hurry, they hire an electric scooter. If they want to move their family to a picnic in the forest, they hire an SUV. And what we see as kind of important in terms of an ecosystem for that is portable user profiles. So the idea that I carry my identity with me and I authenticate through open standards to this mobility platform, and so I don't have to carry my Uber account across to an Uber partner, but I can use my identity as Arthur with any provider of mobility services. And that's, that's really the ecosystem we'd like to see in terms of profile portability. Um, and are there any um, projects um, you uh, in touch with, you're talking to, like some examples? I mean, you, you came up with this um, GoGoRo um, scooter and stuff. I, I think these are very interesting use cases. Is there um, some, something you can... So yeah, ATS, ATS does work with people. Um, as I say, there's lots of innovation happening in this space at the minute, lots of new entrants. Most of the stuff we do in that regard is under NDA. Um, but there are new entrants into this space who have a very strong interest in there not just being one platform, but being multiple platforms. And so we're helping them to build open solutions to that problem. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for your time and your attention. A um, couple more hours, and you guys can all go home and get drunk. Um, so have a good rest of conference, and thank you very much. <laughs>